and welcome to yet another fantastic fabulous and fantabulous session by Vedanta 19th English. Do not forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel because it's absolutely free of cost and let us begin the learning on exam focused. Yes, you heard me right. Exam focused concepts and topics from the chapter life processes from your grade 10. So this is going to be a little longer session. But yes, it's going to be very, very effective. So make sure that you watch it till the end. So, uh, life processes. This is some information about I, me, myself. And now that's my Insta handle where you must follow me so that we can stay connected. And I'm coming live on Sunday. That is, uh, I think that's the 12th of June. So 12th of June, I'm coming live on Instagram. So do follow me so that we can talk. That's very required. And uh, yeah, we can stay connected. So what are the life processes? So these are the processes that a living organism goes through to keep him or her or it living. So these include respiration. These include circulation. These include excretion. These include transportation and a lot more. So they are the, these are the terms that are collectively used for all the processes which make a living organism living like digestion, respiration, circulation and excretion. So to begin with, every living organism moves, whether externally or internally, it undergoes respiration, it undergoes sensitivity, it undergoes growth, reproduction and excretion. So these are the characteristics of living things. This, this can come for a two mark question that what are the or enlist the characteristics of living organisms. Nutrition is also one of them. When I talk about photosynthesis, it is the process by which green plants, certain bacteria and algae, they trap the sunlight. They take carbon dioxide from the air, water from the roots, trap the sunlight, convert it. Carbo carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates. The water is split into hydrogen and oxygen and with the help of sunlight. So that is the process where light is absorbed, light energy is converted to chemical energy and water is split into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen and water in the form of water vapor are the byproducts of photosynthesis. Similarly, carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates and this happens in the dark. So photosynthesis is a two step process where first the splitting of water happens, light energy is converted into chemical energy happens and the last step is where carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates. But when I talk about nutrition in human beings, so the food is taken, the processes involved are ingestion, taking in of food, digestion, breaking down of food complex into simple, absorption of the nutrients, assimilation is using the nutrients to make complex proteins and ingestion that is excretion of the waste food. So here we have got three pairs of salivary glands, the sublingual, submandibular and parotid, the three pairs of salivary glands. Food moves from the mouth to the stomach via the food pipe, esophagus, 20 cm long. Stomach is the widest part of your digestive system containing HCL, pepsin and mucus. HCL is secreted by the oxyntic cells. It maintains acidic medium, kills the germs and activates the pepsin that converts proteins to peptones. Then the mucus protects the walls of the stomach from the HCL. The acidic food moves into the small intestine where it is made alkaline by the bile that is secreted by the liver, stored by the gallbladder, supplied to the small intestine. So bile helps to make the acidic food alkaline. It also helps in the emulsification of fats. Now my pancreas secrete three enzymes that is pancreatic amylase, which again helps in the breakdown of carbohydrates. It helps. It also secretes trypsin that converts the peptones into peptides and it secretes lipase, which converts the emulsified fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Then my food moves into the lower section of the small intestine where there are intestinal juices and finally the digestion is over. So the entire process of digestion is completed in the small intestine. The finger like projections villi, they absorb the nutrients and the undigested food is sent to the large intestine where it passes through the transverse colon uh, sorry, ascending colon, transverse colon and descending colon and any kind of water and salts are absorbed by the body in the large intestine. Finally, the waste food is stored in the rectum and removed through the anus from time to time. When I talk about respiration, it is the process by which glucose is broken down into carbon dioxide and energy and water vapor. 
if glucose is being broken down with the help of oxygen that is called your aerobic respiration if glucose is being broken down without oxygen that is called anaerobic respiration where alcohol and carbon dioxide is made and if glucose is being broken down with limited oxygen that leads to lactic acid formation along with energy and if this lactic acid accumulates in the muscle cells it causes muscle cramps right aquatic organisms have to absorb the oxygen from water and that is why they breathe faster as compared to terrestrial organisms so <clears throat> here we have the nasal cavity pharynx larynx which is the voice box having the vocal cords trachea bronchi bronchioles and alveolar sac so the alveoli are the fundamental unit of the respiratory system where the actual exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the hemoglobin happens when i talk about transportation transportation may i have got two parts in the plant xylem which is involved in the transportation of water and uh, minerals and phloem in the transportation of food so uh, phloem is the transportation of uh, food from the leaves to different parts of the plant so phloem has bi directions and xylem has only one direction so xylem is unidirectional phloem is bi directional now when i talk about the circulatory system circulatory system is required for the transport of nutrients for the transport of waste and for the transport of gases over here uh, we have also got uh, you know the components of the circulatory system include the heart the pumping organ we have also got blood vessels that is arteries veins capillaries and we have got the blood so when i talk about uh, the heart so we have got heart as the four chambered organ the left side is the oxygenated chamber and the right side is the deoxygenated chamber so when i talk about the working of the heart where's the pen so the pen is missing over here anyway i'll use this so the oxygenated blood comes from the pulmonary vein that is from the lungs right it comes in the left atrium from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle we have got a bicuspid valve over here which is also called as the mitral valve so these are two names and from the left ventricle it goes to the entire body through the aorta from the body the blood comes the deoxygenated blood comes through the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava into the right atrium from there it goes into the right ventricle we have got a tricuspid valve over here and from the right ventricle it goes through the pulmonary artery back to the lungs for oxygenation so it is lungs heart heart body body heart heart lungs so the circulation between lungs heart heart lungs is called the pulmonary circulation and the circulation between heart body body heart is called systemic circulation you can look at the rhythm of the heart using or you can understand the rhythm of the heart using a, a stethoscope whereas you can measure the blood pressure using a spike manometer so this is heart body body heart systemic heart lungs lungs heart pulmonary excretion is the process of removal of waste the nitrogen is waste from the body where uh, whereas in the human body the organs of excretion are kidneys lungs and the skin so kidneys uh, help to remove the urine skin helps to remove the sweat and the oil and lungs help to remove the carbon dioxide so we have got kidneys which have got the renal artery that brings the uh, blood to the kidney the renal vein that takes the blood back to the heart we have got the in the kidneys we have got nephrons which have got the bowman's capsule the glomerulus the pct dct and the loop of henle these are the parts of the nephrons and uh, they filter the blood the filtrate comes to the ureters in the form of urine urine is stored in the bladder and finally it's removed from the body through the urethra right so this is a structure of a nephron where the blood comes it flows through the glomerulus under high pressure and whatever goes through the bowman's capsule inside is the filtrate filtrate moves through the pct the loop of henle and the dct and finally comes in the collecting duct that is the urine hemodialysis so dialysis is a process where both the kidneys so we know that we have got two kidneys on either side of the vertebral column so dialysis is a process where both the kidneys have stopped functioning 
either because of an injury or an infection and now the person has to depend on a machine to filter the blood in the body and that process is called dialysis. Plants also excrete in the form of gum, in the form of resins, in the form of leaves, in the form of bark. So they also excrete. Even roots give out salts uh, in the soil. Leaves shed. Bark, you know, gives out layers. And gum and resin is also given out of a plant. So human body is complex and made of many systems. Now there is an amazing, amazing quiz that is present for you to solve in the comment section, oh, sorry, in the description below. So there's a link that is given where you can click and play the quiz, right? So that was all about life processes. We dealt with nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. If you feel like you need me to explain anything to you again, you can either connect with me on Instagram or you can put it in the comment section below. I'll definitely make a small video for all of you. But till then, take care of yourself. Thank you so much for watching guys and also let me tell you that we have got an NTSE crash course for grade 9th and 10th where you get 30 live classes, assessment, assessment tests, quizzes from the top master teachers in the country. You get live doubt solving, gamification in the class and topic wise assignments. You also get to prepare for maths, social studies, science and mental ability. So Renu Ma'am, Ravjot Sir and Sandeep Sharma, these are stalwarts in their field and if you want to prepare for NTSE, if you want to get your name on the national level shining bright, you must take the Vedant 20 SE courses, right? So the batches are beginning from the 13th of June, that is Monday at 7 o'clock. Enroll now and use the coupon code PREPRO for a discount. So do take an attempt at the NTSC batch and your life is going to change forever. So definitely do that guys. And yes, with that we come to the end. Do not forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to Vedant the Young Wonders and do share this video with your friends and school WhatsApp groups. Take care guys. God bless you. Lots of love. Bye-bye.